Hello everyone. Today we'll discuss about the relatively newer concept of regeneration of dental pulp. The contents will be introduction to revascularization, indications, contraindications, clinical procedure overview, and summary. Revascularization is a new treatment method for immature necrotic permanent teeth. Indeed, it would provide after treatment a vital tooth that would be able to complete its root maturation. Immature permanent teeth may become non-vital, usually as a result of trauma, caries or congenital abnormalities. Revascularization may be defined as the invagination of undifferentiated periodontal cells from the apical region which allows continued root development in an immature permanent tooth with necrotic and non-vital pulp and restores the vitality of tooth. And for the case selection, immature permanent upper right lateral incisor with pulpal necrosis and periapical abscess secondary to dental trauma. And this is an ideal case for the revascularization. And here is the preoperative radiograph of the tooth which shows wide open apex here and short developing root of the lateral incisor. Then this is the radiograph after four weeks of initial treatment. Though nearly imperceptible, the root has grown slightly in length here. And here's the six month follow up radiograph, which shows the start of root maturation with an increase in root length. That can be well appreciated here as compared to that four weeks and the initial preoperative radiograph. And this 13 month follow up of the same case indicates complete root formation with an increase in length and thickness of the root. That radicular dentin is also well deposited. And cases treated with revascularization need to be followed up at 3 months, 6 months and annually thereafter for 4 years. Absence of signs and symptoms of pathosis as well as radiographic evidence of bony healing within 2 years of treatment should be expected. Why revascularization should be preferred over conventional apexification? Up to now, apexification procedures were applied for infected and evolved young permanent teeth using calcium hydroxide to induce the formation of an apical barrier or using mineral trioxide aggregate MTA to produce an artificial apical barrier. Both methods have shown to be effective regarding the narrowing of the apical foramen of an immature tooth. However, the pulp revascularization allows also the stimulation of the apical development and the root maturation of immature teeth. It is important to keep in mind that an endodontic treatment of an immature tooth, often necessary up to now, involves a root canal treatment of on an open apex tooth with thin and fragile walls. This will involve the persistence of a weakened tooth with often a resolved long-term prognosis due to the remaining of an intrinsic fragility and to the difficulty to obtain a good sealing of an open apex. Revascularization technique would allow the growth of root and thus avoiding the remaining of thin and fragile walls. It will reduce the risk of root fracture. This is not the case with apexification treatment. And revascularization treatment is based on the theory that in the absence of bacteria and in the presence of an appropriate three-dimensional scaffold and steam progenitor cells, inside the root canal space and with creation of a bacteria tight seal tissue repair can occur as in devitalized uninfected evolved immature permanent teeth. The advantages of revascularization over the conventional endodontic procedures are it is a natural regenerative approach, relatively strong thick dentin deposition in the newly formed root can be formed, pure pulp revitalization in spite of necrosis or evolution and it is simple and can be performed with current available instruments and medicaments without ex expensive biotechnology and regeneration of tissue by patient's own blood cell avoids the possibility of immune rejection or pathogen transmission. 
and again the indication for case selection is non-vital immature young permanent tooth with open apex and short roots is indicated in this radiograph. This immature permanent upper right lateral incisor with pulpal necrosis, I've already shown the four weeks, six months and 13, week, uh, 13 months follow up. And contraindications, uh, talking about the contraindications, deciduous tooth should not be selected for revascularization as they would eventually lead to root resorption for physiological exfoliation. And for mature permanent tooth with root apex narrower than 1 mm, it is very unlikely that the stem cells of the apical papilla would migrate easily via such a narrow entrance to favor regeneration. And the treatment is usually done in two sessions. In the first session, the tooth is isolated after giving local anesthesia and pulp chamber is accessed. Root, channel, root canal disinfection by 1.5% sodium hypochlorite followed by 17% EDTA education is done. Where this concentration is used, you, you may refer to the journals uh, that is given in the reference section. And then the root canals are dried with paper cones. Then the triple antibiotic paste, which is a mixture of minocycline, metronidazole and ciprofloxacin is inserted into the root canal with the help of a lentulo spidal and care should be taken that the antibiotic paste is only up to the level of CEZ otherwise it will stain the tooth if it reaches the pulp chamber due to the component minocycline. A cotton ball is placed at the root canal and the excess cavity is sealed with an intermediate restorative material or GIC for proper sealing and mixing of the inter uh, triple antibiotic paste is uh, shown here and its insertion with the lentulus spidal. And in the second visit, if the symptoms like pain, swelling and post-discharge disappear, second step is carried out. Otherwise, once again, the first step is repeated by applying triple antibiotic paste. After access to root canal in the second visit, triple antibiotic paste is removed using irrigation and with 1.5% sodium, sodium hypochlorite and induction of bleeding using a file is shown here the bleeding is induced uh, that is for the scaffold of the stem cells and apical bleeding is caused by using a K file uh, 2 mm past the apical foramen and to allow the blood clot to fill the canal and application of 3 mm of MTA or biodentin is applied over the mm, well formed clot and then hermetic seal is obtained with GIC and composite over it. The patient is recalled for follow up as uh, mentioned before. Although it is a relatively newer concept and few evidences from case reports only do exist Revascularization is natural and better solution to treat non-vital young teeth. Hence, this is a technique that definitely merits a try when one has to treat non-vital young permanent teeth is even if the treatment fails, the operator can still resort to the traditional methods for the management of these cases. And these are the references for further insight into this topic. These will be kept in the description of this video. I hope you like this. Thank you very much.